Population of uh, Fritillaria agrestis this time within the Carrizo Plain National Monument. And it's uh, quite a healthy population. Growing on clays derived from uh, volcanics. You can see the nice little volcanic exposure right there. It's all volcanic rock. Just one little. It's volcanic rock that was laid down and I think everything's been tilted up at like a maybe a 80, 90, even a hundred degree. Nah, it's about an 80 degree dip to the west. That's east, that's west. Wasn't even sure if this was really aggressive, but it does smell like hell. It's got that uh, bathroom vapor smell. Real nice population of them too. Look at it, that, that's a fucking massive flower cluster. And I can smell them from here. It's got that uh, bathroom vapor, that sewer vapor smell coming out the floor drain of the gas station bathroom. That's kind of what it smells like. And there's so many of them. Again, growing on thick clay. Thick volcanic clay. Ooh. Okay, so this dainty bastard's a federally listed endangered species. This is Monolopia congdonii. And it, there's a couple growing over there, uh, right where this meathead parked this truck, uh, which is kind of hilarious. You just can't win. The planet's fucked. Anyway, uh, Monolopia congdonii. Uh, again, it looks nothing like other species in a genus Monolopia. It's just a, you know, fucking dainty annual aster, but only, uh, only occurs uh, in the San Joaquin Valley. I believe only on the west side, too. West of Fresno. What a beautiful little hamlet. Holy shit. Have you been there recently? Sci-fi dystopia. Kick me in the balls. Anyway, uh, no ray flowers. Discoid. I wonder how the hell this thing gets pollinated. Again, federally listed. Pretty rare. Pretty ad. Growing completely prostrate. Again, that's prostrate, not prostate fuck's wrong with me anyway so that grossly oversized massive hot wheels truck only killed one monolopia congdonii it's not too bad i don't know whether they take it as a herbarium voucher or what probably not i'll probably just leave it maybe it'll set some seed that man looked like a wonderful conversationalist real fucking intellect on that guy boy i tell you what a keeper they also left a bloody tampon a candy wrapper and a cigarette butt so and the good news at least he's smoking he'll die sooner <laughs> You couldn't make shit like this up. It's a fucking satire. I've been working my way back to you, babe. And the burning love inside. Oh, such a hit. Anyway, here's some verdict clays. Verdict meaning uh, it swells when it's got moisture in it. And then, of course, uh, you get a drastic reduction in volume once that moisture is, quote, baked out. Okay? Once that moisture is lost, then it dries out. So uh, you get the, the physical forces exerted on the roots of plants. Not to mention the goddamn landscape. You get some major cracks in the roadways and land, uh, land uh, seepage, you know, moving down slope. Uh, but they're also, this shit has gypsum in it, okay? Which means, makes for some weird soil chemistry. You can see those little selenite crystals, that's gypsum. I believe gypsum is calcium sulfate. You'd assume because of the calcium, it makes it more alkali. I've actually heard statements that the sulfide minerals uh, actually make it more acidic. Either way, it's a, a harsh chemistry, and you can see all those non-native uh, grasses over there. The green cannot compete. They're not growing anywhere here. But what you do get, you get some really nice native annuals, like this mentzelia, okay? Goddamn Velcro leaf. Lois ACA is the family. No idea on what species this is. We've seen another one up on the, uh, up on the, uh, around the little bend over there, growing in the shade on an east-facing slope. This obviously does not need an east-facing slope. This can take full sun, growing in the verdict clay, growing in this harsh, fucked-up soil. Then come down here, look at this. Look at what you got down here nice, okay? Look at this. You got Aramothra boothii, evening primrose family. A lot of things in this family pollinated by moths at night. They got the white flowers. Oh, I just touched this salvia, this chia, salvia columbariae, exuding a lot of the terpenes. I, just from them touching it, I'm two feet away from it, I can smell it. 
It's so goddamn strong. Then you got a monolopia, nice uh, genus of annuals, annual asters. So that's what's going on there. Verdict clays, verdict clays, verdict. Well, look at that. It's Claytonia, probably exigua. Maybe uh, the gypsum loving one. Maybe that, what is it, gypsophila? Real interesting family. Semi succulent. Same order as cacti. But it's in a family called Montiaceae. Miner's lettuce is another uh, common name for one of these species. There's a the tiny ass little flowers over there. Look, there's some dinandra. One of the tarweeds. Pretty sure it's dinandra. Might be madia. These are interesting. These are, what, of course, again, what migrated. One of these made it to the Hawaiian Islands in the plumage of a bird five uh, million years ago and uh, evolved into the uh, lineage of silver swords, which are just so fucking weird. Six foot tall, blue, coalescent. It's like a coalescent with a basal rosette. It was one of these that made it over there. You can see the hairs are just covered in those little glands and trichomes. That's why they're called the tarweeds. Very sticky, very sticky, resinous, and smelly. Here you go. Here's a perfect example of why people don't fuck with asters, okay? This this guy right here, this is Dinandra haliana, okay? It looks literally just like the goddamn media radiata we've seen over on that hillside, okay? Same ray, yellow ray flowers, the phyleries look the same, everything. The only difference being is that it comes up from this kind of rosette of leaves and the basal leaves down there when you look at them they're glabrous they're not they're not like velcro they're smooth they're not like hairy and papillose and then it's got a little bit different of a of a morphology in the stems and the leaves the leaves are still sessile they got no no stem connecting them to the main shoot but it's smooth and glabrous but it, it's still a tarweed still in the same tribe as the media but it looks uh it looks nearly identical to it, you know? You really got to get up in there to look. Look at the phyleries on this. Looks just like the media, you know? Crazy. Aster AC is a pain in the Okay, last example of uh, the differences between Madia radiata and uh, Dinandra. Obviously, uh, one of the big ones here, god damn it. One of the big ones here, of course, is the stem. If you look at a stem, uh, this, this goddamn Madia right here, look, it's covered in glands so much so... It's even got bugs on it. It's got bugs stuck to it. See those glands with all the resins and shit? The bugs get stuck. And you look at the dinandra, you get close, and you look at the stem. There's no glands, there's no bugs. It's just smooth, it's glabrous. And it's kind of red. Okay, but then other than that, I mean, you know? And if you didn't know that, you'd think they were the same. The differences are so minute. I mean, I guess the, the pedestals on this, the actual... The, the branches, the stems that hold the flower that branch off the main shoot are a little bit longer in uh, the Maria than in the uh, Dinandra. But uh, either way, you know, Asteraceae, it's a clusterfuck. Lots of minute differences. Lots of DYCs, damn yellow composites. Very hard to tell the difference between uh, many of the taxa in the family. Look at it. You got so much goddamn selenite you could make your own drywall. So much gypsum. Anyway, look at this. This buckwheat is real nice. Now you get the full frontal of it. Not full frontal. That's antithesis. But you get, you can get the, the effect of seeing how, I mean, it's one of the only perennials. You know, everything else is an annual. It grows, dies, uh, you know, everything else here is an annual. It grows, dies real fast uh, after producing a lot of seed. But these come back every year. And it's that Areogonum nudum uh, variety indictum. Why am I being indicted? Then you get some Erica Mary over there too. Aster family. Aster ACA. But you can see those coalescent stems of that areogonum, that buckwheat. God, it looks nice. Look at that. Isn't that nice? It's so nice. Doesn't it make you feel better? Doesn't it make you forget all the horrible shit going on in your life? Anyway, you can see these, uh, again, it's got those inflated stems, those inflated peduncles, like areogonum inflatum, which you get in the Mojave Desert, which I'm guessing uh, this uh, shares a common ancestor with. If not, uh, just evolved from Areogonum inflatum itself or uh, from a recent Pleistocene a species. You get a lot of, like I said, you get a lot of affinities in this region, the western San Joaquin Valley. Uh, you get a lot of affinities with uh, Mojave Desert plants because it really is a desert here. It's basically what's going on.
So desert with a little bit more winter rain.